How much can my Super C motorhome tow? 12,000 pounds. That's exactly what it can tow. Will it do it practically? Yes. Would I do it in a pinch? Yeah. Would I tow 10,000 with it? Yeah, no problem at all. Um, if you want to stick around, I'm going to show you the different ways to determine that. Um, you basically need to look it up on the brochure, look it up on the manual, look it up on the bumper, look it up on the trailer hitch. Um, so I'm rated for a 12,000 pound trailer hitch on this and I climbed underneath it and looked at it and it did say 12,000 pounds on it and the difference for that 12,000 pounds is the difference between the gross vehicle weight ratio and the gross combined vehicle weight ratio and I believe this RV is 41,000 pounds total combined and the weight ratio of the motorhome itself is 12 or 13,000 less than that. I'm going to look it up and so you take that full combined weight of everything in it, the fuel, the passengers, the water, and that's what you can tow, actually carry in the RV itself and then you weigh your trailer and the weight of the trailer um, and the capacity of the trailer, so like if you have a 7,000 pound trailer um, I've done that towing a lot. I have a 7,000 pound capacity trailer and I put my Jeep on it which weighs 4,500 to 5,000 pounds. Then I put a four-wheeler on it which weighs, well, I don't know, let's say 500 pounds and the trailer itself 1,600 pounds. And so I get close to that 7,000 pound ratio and I tow it behind this motorhome all the time. Um, motorhome tows it. It doesn't go fast. It doesn't go into race mode. I don't want to go into race mode. I'm big. I'm in the slow lane just following the semis and the semis are usually going right about 70 some of them 75 some of them 65 and so I'll pass the ones going 65 and then I'll just settle in at about 70 the motorhome will go faster than that and act really stable and feel good towing and or just by itself in the wind that's one of the things about Super C is it's low and it's stable and with the Cummins engine in it it's got a lot of power and a lot of torque um, we'll look that up show you the specs of that engine. Um, I do have another video I'll put a link to that shows the gas mileage I got towing that 7,000 pound Jeep all the way to Island Park and back. Um, I got I think 9.9 .9 miles per gallon, 9 miles per gallon, which I think was actually really pretty good. Um, but once again, to find your final towing capacity that you can legally tow, you take the gross combined vehicle weight rating and you subtract the gross vehicle weight rating and that difference is what you can tow um, legally. Will anybody stop you and check you? They won't, you don't need to go through weigh stations. You don't need a special CDL license to have a motorhome like this in tow, which is actually not true. So you need to you need to check on the state that you live in and decide if you need a special license to tow a motorhome like this, um, to tow a motorhome with all these weight ratios. There's a magic number, 26,001 pound, and if you are over that in a lot of states, about 20 states, you do need a special type of license or endorsement to tow. But if you live in one of the states, like uh, the state I live in, does not have a the need for a special endorsement. I live, I live here and I'm licensed here and so I can legally tow this 41,000 pounds around and go into every state, all 48 states um, or Alaska if I wanted to drive up there. I can legally tow and nobody will mess with me because I'm legal and set for the license that I'm in. But if I move to another state that did require some type of commercial driver's license or some type of semi-commercial driver's licenses. I know there's regular licenses, there's RV type commercial licenses, and then there are full-blown commercial trucker licenses where you're getting paid to tow. So there's different levels of licensing. Um, but that's it. That's how my Seneca works. It's 39 feet long and I can tow. Trailer I tow is 20 feet long. No problem. So I'm not really over a length limit. I think the length limit is 60 feet or something. I'll look up the length limit too. 
and edit that in. All right, this is cool. This is worth noting. Open up your driver door, and here's a information about the incomplete vehicle, which is actually the fact that RVs are two pieces. They're a truck made by a Freightliner and then an RV made by Jayco. But anyway, here's the gross vehicle weight ratio of 29,000. That's what the RV itself can weigh. Uh, 10,000 pounds on the front wheels. 19,000 pounds on the dualies in the back. This is the size of the tires. This is the PSI, 100 PSI. 110 PSI is what you should um, pump them up to. Uh, the size of the tire once again and the manufacturer date is under here with the VIN. So useful information. One more sticker inside the door of my RV that's interesting to look at. This is the capacities and the weights. It shows 900 or 680 pounds of water and then it shows that the coach itself weighs 23,766 full of propane and gasoline or diesel because it's a diesel when it was manufactured so between 23,700 plus 700 you've got like 2450 is basically the weight of this and then you have from 2450 up to 29,000 to put cargo in it and then when you put a trailer on it the max you can be total is 41,000 um, for the combined so that's really good information to have it'd also be a good idea to go buy a truck stop and actually pay the 10 bucks and weigh yourself or go to a metal recycler and weigh the RV and see what it weighs with all your gear in it ready to go without your trailer all right well once again thanks for watching like share subscribe tell your mom Make comments about where you're camping next, where you're RVing next.